Hey guys, so today I've got a huge and epic meal prep for you. This is just a real life meal prep where I'm cleaning up my fridge, using up everything I have in my fridge and pantry to prep some delicious food for the week. So let's get started. So I got a rotisserie chicken earlier this week and I saved the carcass of it because you can make a delicious chicken stock out of this and then in turn, make some type of chicken soup with it. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet. I haven't thought that far, but I wanted to get this prepped. So I've got my chicken remainder in there. I'm just gonna toss in two big chunks of onion. I'm gonna throw in some celery. I've got a clove of garlic. I knew that was gonna happen. What you can do is you can just cut the garlic kind of in half to expose the cloves and put the whole thing in there because we're gonna end up straining this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna add this bag of rainbow baby carrots that I need to use up. And since we're really cleaning out the fridge here, I found some thyme and some parsley. You throw those in there. And then I like to just throw, have a lemon and throw it in there. I think that flavor is really good in chicken broth or chicken soup. And add some peppercorns. I'm totally guessing. If I had to guess, I'd say one tablespoon. And then I'm gonna add probably, I don't know, we'll start with a tablespoon and a half of salt. You can always add more later, turn on the heat. Do you guys have a favorite burner on the stove or is it just me? Mine's the front left one. <laughs> so I'm gonna push all that down in there. And then I really like to simmer mine for at least an hour. What's gonna happen is the vegetables will break down, the flavor will get concentrated, and then all of the extra meat that's on that chicken will fall off and we can use that in the soup. I'm thinking obviously either chicken rice soup or some type of chicken vegetable soup with pasta. Okay, so it's a little bit later. My stock has cooked. I simmered it down for about 75 minutes and let it cool a little bit. This is my new uh, huge bowl that I got from Amazon. I'll link all of these cooking supplies down below, by the way. This is also a strainer that I'm gonna use to strain the broth, but I was tired of not having a bowl big enough to mix large quantity things, so got this one. So I'm just gonna pour the stock into here. Okay, and then what I like to do is make sure it's all strained out and then I will put the strainer back on top of the pot. Um, that way I can kind of pick out all the meat and then this is the delicious chicken stock we were left with. Okay, so we ended up with all of this chicken stock and then this is the extra chicken that I pulled off of the bones. So this is what we used to make our soup. So I decided I'm gonna make some chicken orzo soup. So I've got some carrots in the bottom of my pot here with a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm just giving those a quick saute before I add my chicken stock back in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this come to a boil. Obviously, the carrots are not cooked yet. So I'm gonna let this come to a boil. When it's boiling, I'm gonna add the orzo and then uh, cook that for the recommended amount of time. By then the carrots will be cooked and then I'll add the chicken at kind of the last minute. Obviously, it's already cooked, so I don't want it to get overcooked. I'm gonna add the orzo. Let's see, I think. Trying to decide how much I want to do. I'm going to do a cup and a half. This is obviously just eyeballing it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so the orzo is almost done. I added some white meat chicken to this just so I would have enough. So I'm going to add the chicken. And then this just really needs to heat through. And then I like to taste it, obviously, to make sure it doesn't need any salt. I always feel like when you make a chicken soup, or really any kind of soup, um, 
it always needs more seasoning so we'll just taste it and see what it needs okay so i'm really excited to let you guys know that today's meal prep video is sponsored by thrive market i've worked with them a lot here on my channel and even before i started working with them here on youtube i used their service because i love getting hard to find groceries from them and so when they reached out to work with me again i was like yes of course i love sharing a really good discount with you guys as well so if you're not familiar with thrive market they are an online membership based grocery store and they are on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. I really love a Thrive Market because you really can save so much on hard to find and organic groceries. I have done price comparisons before. I've done videos on that before. I'll link the ones that I've done down below and Thrive Market really is cheaper. They can help you cut your grocery bill by over 30%, especially if you're looking for organic groceries, specialty items, and hard to find items. You can shop for thousands Thousands of the best-selling organic foods and natural products below traditional retail prices. They also price match and so if you find a product that's cheaper at your grocery store you can let them know and they will price match that item for you. I know that where I live in the rural Midwest it is really hard to find some of these specialty ingredients around here. I also am a super busy working mom and so being able to just log on to their app and find these items that I want to use to cook new recipes is super convenient. I just go on the app, order what I need, and it comes straight to my door. I also wanted to mention that if you are on a special diet, such as gluten-free, vegan, or keto, you can shop by over 90 plus diets and values on their website. It's super easy to sort by the type of product you are looking for. And the other thing that I think is really great about Thrive is they have a Thrive Gives initiative. It makes it possible for low-income families teachers and veterans to access natural and organic foods and products easily. So for every paid annual membership, Thrive Market donates a free membership to someone in need. And I think that that is just fantastic. If you guys want to try out Thrive Market, you can go to thrivemarket.com slash Jen Chapin to receive a free $60 gift when you join Thrive Market today. One of the gifts that they are offering for October is actually their Thrive Market Healthy Living Made Easy cookbook, which I love this cookbook. I've had it for quite a while and I'm going to be sharing some recipes out of it in today's meal prep video so make sure that you pick that up as your free gift if you're interested in that but you will receive a free $60 gift when you join Thrive Market today you can go to thrivemarket.com slash Jen Chapin to shop all of the ingredients I'm showing in today's video plus thousands and thousands more they really have so much to offer i also love getting fresh meat and seafood from them their frozen section is awesome so don't forget to check out that link below and thanks again to thrive market for sponsoring today's video all right so i seasoned my soup uh you can definitely just use salt and pepper obviously but i used some of this nor chicken bouillon you could actually use any chicken bouillon or chicken base um, but actually I kind of made this for like a hybrid dinner and meal prep. So we did have this for dinner tonight with some sandwiches, but then I'm also going to have enough to store in the fridge for later in the week as well. Okay, so I actually ended up getting two quarts of chicken soup out of those leftovers. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, do I recommend freezing this? The answer is no. You can freeze the chicken rice soup and get away with it, but pasta that's in soups like this, if you freeze it and thaw it back out and cook it, it tends to get like really, really mushy. So Milo, you need to get down, honey. Get down, get down, yes, get down. It's still a puppy. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would not recommend freezing this like this. Now, if you did want to freeze this, what you could do is take out some of the broth and the carrots and the chicken mixture. You could freeze that and then heat it back up later and add the pasta and cook it when you are going to serve it. But, um, that's fine. I'll just put this in the fridge. We'll have it for another meal later this week. We'll have it for lunches. 
maybe I'll share one with the neighbor. I don't know, I always find something to do with it. Okay, so I'm gonna prep these double dark chocolate muffins. This is the Kodiak Cakes brand that I got from Thrive. They look really good and I like that they have extra protein in them, especially for like breakfast for the kids during the week. So I have some oil, two eggs, milk, and then I'm just gonna mix these by hand using my Danish dough whisk, which I will link down below. I got this on Amazon. It is awesome for like muffins and quick breads. Whenever I'm making like muffins or bread or cake or anything like that, I always like to mix my wet ingredients together first so I can get those combined. That way I don't have to over mix the um, batter. Did you know that doggies can't have chocolate? No. What? Two eggs. All right, I'm gonna put my mix in. It smells good. Here's my muffins. I put them in a lined muffin pan. I'm gonna pop these in the oven at 375. All right, so I just took these out of the oven. I feel like they're still a little bit soft in the middle, but that's fine. I'd rather take them out a little bit early and have them continue to cook in the pan for a little bit because it's really easy to overcook muffins and make them dry, but they smell super delicious. So normally, nope, you stay down, this is hot. <laughs> Um, normally I let these sit in the pan for maybe like, I don't know, five minutes and then I'll transfer them to a cooling rack. Okay, I wanted to show you guys the inside of these and tell you how they tasted because I've never tried them before this. They are so good. I highly recommend this boxed mix. So if you are ordering from Thrive, definitely pick it up. They are super moist and they also have um, chocolate chips in them. So it makes it a little bit gooey. And then also I like that it's not like super, super sweet. And you also can't taste the extra protein in there. So highly recommend these. I apologize. My son is throwing something upstairs. I have no idea what it is, but I'm going to eat this muffin. Okay, so I want to prep some shrimp for um, this week. I'll show you guys how I do this. Essentially, I'm just going to cook it in some seasoned boiling water, shock it in ice water, and then I can use this throughout the week for salads, um, shrimp cocktail, or sp uh, spring rolls with rice paper. So I rinsed the shrimp off really well. I always do that with seafood, um, and sometimes I do it with chicken too, it just depends. If you are looking for great quality seafood, I do highly recommend Thrive Market. I've ordered so much meat and seafood from them. Shrimp, halibut, salmon, uh, mahi-mahi, it's all really good. And especially if you're like me and you live in the middle of nowhere, sometimes it's kind of hard to get this stuff. So in this pot, I just have some water with a lemon that I cut up and it's boiling along with some seafood seasoning. You can use any kind of seafood seasoning you have. If you don't have seafood seasoning, just Google how to make it with a spice mix and you'll, I'm sure, have most of the spices on hand. So I'm just gonna take the shrimp and add them to the boiling water. And these literally cook in, I mean, usually like two to three minutes, just until they're opaque. Okay, so this has barely even come back up to a boil and they're already cooked as you can see you definitely don't want to overcook them so as soon as they curl up and get firm and opaque take them out so I have a bowl of ice here I'm gonna put water on top of it but I wanted to just throw the shrimp on there first and I, I kind of told you guys what I plan on using these for um, the shrimp will not take up a ton of that seafood seasoning flavor in fact, if you really wanted to, you could just use salt, pepper, whatever. Um, I just like the taste of it and I find that it makes the shrimp a little less bland. Okay, so I added some cold water in there. I'm just gonna let these cool until 
they're cool cool until they're cool <laughs> and then i'll drain them and i'll show you how i store them so i went ahead and drained the shrimp i like to store them in a container with a paper towel on the bottom just so they stay dry you can also squeeze some extra lemon juice over them but i'm gonna stick these in the fridge and then we will have them for week and I'll show you guys in a different video what I make with them. All right, so we're gonna prep some buffalo chicken and these are just four thin cut chicken breasts in this uh, dressing that I'm using as marinade. What I did was yesterday, I poured some of this Whole30 buffalo vinaigrette into a dish and I just simply marinated four of these chicken breasts in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cook these in the air fryer and then I can spice them up and we'll have them for salads for lunches. Okay, so I got a new air fryer a while back. It's the Ninja, is it the Ninja Foodie air fryer? I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, it has like a temperature probe in it that you can use, but these chicken breasts are so thin that I don't think it's really gonna be that effective. So I think what I'm gonna do is just air fry these at 390. I'm gonna start with eight minutes and I can always add more time. All right, I apologize if you can hear the air fryer going, but I'm cooking those chicken breasts. And while I'm cooking those, I actually also got some other chicken breasts out of the freezer, and these are just plain. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do with these is season them with a different seasoning rather than the buffalo. So I have some garlic herb seasoning left over. I don't know what this is left over from, but I'm gonna use it on this chicken. So I just sprinkled some salt and pepper. Uh, the seasoning I'm using is salt-free, that's why I added salt. And then I'm also gonna cook these in the air fryer after the buffalo ones are done. I've really been trying to focus on eating more protein throughout the day because I know that it keeps me full and when I eat empty carbs, it just like, you know, like when you eat empty carbs, you're just hungry like an hour later. So I've really been trying to increase my veggie and my protein intake. And having stuff like this on hand is super helpful. Um, even though I work from home most of the time when I'm not traveling, I still don't really have a ton of time during the day to be making something super involved for lunch. So even just having chopped up cooked chicken on hand is super helpful to either make like a bowl or a wrap or a salad or something like that. Okay, so these uh, chicken breasts are about half done. What I'm gonna actually gonna do now is drizzle a little bit of buffalo sauce on here just because I kind of want them glazed with the buffalo sauce. I, I didn't put a lot on. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn them over. Oh, honey. Did you use your own recipe for this um, muffin? No, it's a mix. Everyone, go go buy my mom's cookbook. <laughs> okay, put some more on, then I'll cook them the rest of the way. All right, so we've got our two types of chicken prepped for the week. We've got buffalo, it smells delicious, and then we've got our garlic herb with salt and pepper. Okay, so we are gonna prep some quinoa tabbouleh. And I first actually made this a couple weeks ago when I made a salad in a jar video. So I'll link that video down below if you guys haven't seen it yet. It has some great um, recipes for salads in a jar and there's a printable included that's free so you can make them all at home. Great for lunch meal prep. But I loved the quinoa tabbouleh that I made so much that I wanna make it again. Normally I have made tabbouleh with bulgur wheat, but I really liked it with the quinoa. So I got this uh, tricolor quinoa from Thrive Market. I just have one cup of it here. I rinsed it with cold water in the sink and then I have some cucumber, tomato, red onion, some fresh parsley and fresh mint. And then we'll obviously use lemon juice, salt and pepper. You don't even need any oil for this. I may add some feta cheese to it, I'm not sure yet. So in this saucepan, I just have two cups of water. So the ratio is just two parts water to one part quinoa. And then I'm just gonna bring this to a boil, turn the heat down and simmer it for about 12 minutes. And just like rice, when the quinoa is finished cooking, you do wanna let it sit for a little bit to kind of 
absorb any of the water and the rinsing helps it not to stick together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop all my veggies up and I've just got a bowl here. I'm not quite sure how many tomatoes I'm gonna need. I might only need one. I need to see obviously how much quinoa I have. And I'm gonna try to cut these as into as small of chunks as possible. So we've got all of our veggies in here along with the juice of two lemons. I'm just going to give this a stir. I did end up putting both tomatoes in there. I just kind of wanted to see how many I had before I cut them both up. And then my quinoa is perfectly cooked. So I'm just going to let this sit here until it cools. Stir it around every so often. I don't want to obviously add it warm to the veggies because we don't want to wilt the veggies. But then we'll stir in the quinoa give it a taste and that's it it's a great meal prep for the week okay so i went ahead and stirred the cooled quinoa into the veggie mixture added a little bit of extra salt and pepper i feel i feel like i could even add more lemon juice but i'm gonna let it sit in the fridge <laughs> before i decide to add more i like a lot of lemon juice but you know obviously you can adjust to your taste and um i told you guys about the feta also so I'm gonna actually leave that separate as well because it's just super easy for me to cut it up and put it on top. But I'm kind of gonna show you how I plan to put this together during the week. Okay, so here are those chicken breasts that I prepped, if you remember. I did four uh, buffalo and four garlic and herb. So obviously I think that the garlic and herb ones will go really well with this quinoa. And then of course I have my feta. Like I said, I'm not gonna chunk that up yet but what I'm planning to do is kind of make a bowl out of this um, obviously I don't have to cook it or anything it'll be super easy during the week so put a couple of spoonfuls of this into a big bowl dice up my chicken put that in there dice up some feta put that in there um, throw some spring mix in there for a little extra greens maybe a tiny little bit more lemon juice salt and pepper and I think that's gonna be an awesome lunch delicious i'm excited to eat it okay so i'm gonna prep some breakfast sandwiches for the week i was gonna actually buy some at the store today and then i thought you know what i have all the ingredients for this at home adam likes these for breakfast so i'm gonna go ahead and do five of them one for each day for him so i've got some pork sausage here some american i'm just using good old american cheese because i've got a package in the fridge that i want to get used up i'm using some english muffins some bagels these are everything bagels and then I've got some eggs here as well okay so I finished the sausages and then I just wiped the skillet out so I could fry up the eggs um, I was gonna bake these in like a baking dish and then kind of cut it apart into squares but I figured since I already had the skillet out it'd be just as easy to use that All right, so here's how my breakfast sandwiches turned out. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these up in parchment paper and put them in a big Ziploc bag. I like to wrap them in parchment paper rather than foil because then obviously they're easier to microwave. Okay, so we're gonna do a baked meatball meal prep because I'm gonna be traveling this week and I'm gonna be home one day before I leave again. And so I figure if I prep this, we'll have an easy meal for that night. So. What I've got in my bowl here is, I don't know, about a pound and a half of ground beef with one egg. I've got some parsley, some Italian seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and then I've got a jar of the Thrive Classic Marinara Sauce, which is really good. 
this recipe I am using the Thrive Market cookbook as a um, as an inspiration or starting point I'm not gonna follow the recipe exactly but I'm gonna show you guys how I prep this for the fridge to eat later in the week all right so I'm gonna start out by mincing up my parsley just about two tablespoons of that I feel like I might need to get some new bowls these are <laughs> getting a little bit cloudy okay probably about I don't know, two teaspoons maybe of salt, some black pepper. Some meatball recipes call for like grated onion or diced onion. I don't really prefer that texture in my meatballs. Um, I guess grated you could do, but I don't tell you the truth. I don't really want to mess with it <laughs> today. So I'm just gonna use some onion powder, some garlic powder. I would say, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of each. Uh, we'll do, I don't know, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And then I'm gonna add some um, grated Parmesan cheese. Sometimes I add breadcrumbs to my meatballs, but to tell you the truth, you don't necessarily really need it per se. I'm gonna leave it out of these and just give this a stir. I find the easiest way to mix up meatballs is with a fork. If you're making a super large batch, you can also do it with a KitchenAid mixer. Okay, so I've got a freezer pan here. I'm just gonna take the meat mixture and, I don't know, probably, I would say this is about a tablespoon and a half of meatball mix and roll it into balls and put it into the tray. I've greased the bottom of the tray with just a tiny little bit of olive oil. Most of the time you really don't need it because the, you know, there's fat in the beef, but just in case. And what I'm gonna end up doing is, I have my oven set at 375. I wanna bake these most of the way through, but I'm also gonna be baking them when the time comes to make them during the week. So they will continue to cook at that point as well. Basically, I just want to kind of render some of the fat off of them before we add the sauce. Okay, so these are going to go into the oven for, I don't know, we'll start with 12 minutes and see how that works. I'm going to try and use some smoked mozzarella to top these meatballs because I feel like it's going to be like really delicious and I've never done that before. <laughs> I've only ever had smoked mozzarella um, string cheese. So this is gonna be interesting. I think it's gonna be delightful. So I'm gonna thinly slice this, very actually messily. What you can do if you have time or you care more than I do, is you can put your mozzarella cheese in, the fresh mozzarella cheese in the, um, freezer for a little bit before you slice or grate it. Okay, here's my meatballs. I drained the fat off. They're not gonna win a beauty contest, so don't enter me for that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that jar of marinara sauce over here. Now, when you serve these, you actually don't even really have to serve them with pasta. I probably will, because the kids like it, but like Adam and I could just eat these with a salad and a side of bread or something like that. I'm gonna add my sliced mozzarella over the top. Yeah, I mean, basically now all I have to do is stick this in the fridge and then when it's time for dinner, I'll probably bake this covered, 350, 375 for 20 to 30 minutes just until it's heated through and we'll have a delicious meatball bake that we can serve with garlic bread or pasta. Here's my breakfast sandwiches done for the week. Boom. Thank you guys so much for watching today's meal prep video. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market. I'll have them linked in the description box below so you guys can pick up all of the ingredients in today's video. Plus, you're gonna get a free gift up to $60. Make sure you pick up that cookbook because it is fantastic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.